Hello everyone. So today we are going to discuss regarding cancer. So uh, in this uh, discussion we are going to talk about the basic aspects of cancer. So which are related to the introduction, the nomenclature of cancer and the characteristics of cancer. So here the thing first which we are going to discuss is regarding its synonyms. So cancer is also known as neoplasm and it can also be called as tumor. So the term neoplasm or neoplasia, so neoplasia is nothing but new growth but all the new growths are not cancers. New growth produced is called neoplasm which is also known as tumor but all the new growths are not neoplasm. Suppose if you do a haircut, so very soon after two to three days we will observe new growth of your hair but it is not your tumor. But then what is the actual definition of cancer or tumor or neoplasm so neoplasm or tumor or cancer is a mass of tissue formed as a result of abnormal excessive uncoordinated autonomous and purposeless proliferation of cells even after the session of stim stimulus or growth which caused it that means so here whatever the cellular growth which is happening it is not normal it is more than the excess it is not coordinated by growth controls and it is autonomous that means it will behave as it likes and there is no purpose for that uh, growth and coming to the next slide so we can also define cancer in a simpler form so cancer is a disease where cell grow out of control and invade erode and destroy normal tissue so yeah, I think you all very you are all very familiar with the symbol of cancer. So generally the symbol of cancer is nothing but crab. So why uh, they kept this can so this crab as a symbol for cancer means so this crab whenever it tightly holds something, it will be very tough uh, to get rid of that. So that's why uh, they kept cancer so crab as a symbol of cancer. So whenever if an individual is getting suffering from cancer, whenever if there is any cancer in a tissue, it will be very tough to remove the tumor or to remove the cancer from the tissue. So that's why they kept crab as a symbol of cancer. Coming to the next aspect, oncology. So the study of cancer, you all know it is known as oncology. Oncos means tumor and logos means study. And there are different uh, types of oncology, surgical oncology medical oncology, radiation oncology, nursing oncology and psycho oncology, psychosocial oncology. Surgical oncology is related to the removal of cancer by surgery. Medical oncology is related to medicine and radiation oncology is nothing but uh, exposing the tumor with certain amount of radiation and killing that. And nursing oncology is related to uh, nursing related activities which in case of uh, uh, cancer patients as well as psychosocial oncology. And Coming to the classification of tumors, so these tumors or cancers are broadly classified into two types, benign tumors as well as the malignant tumors. So benign tumors are slowly growing ones and malignant tumors are rapidly growing ones. Apart from this growth, so the basic differences which are there in between this benign and malignant tumors are nothing but benign tumors they will grow slowly and rapid tumors they will rapidly grow and benign tumors can't invade into other or uh, neighboring tissues but malignant tumors they can invade into uh, uh, neighboring tissues so benign tumors can't metastasis that means they won't spread from one place to another place but malignant tumors will have the capacity and benign tumors will not cause much harm to our body but malignant tumors they will cause more harm to our body and sometimes even death components of tumors so not only tumor whatever the tissue which is there in our body so it comprises of two components one is parenchyma and second one is nothing but supportive stroma so parenchyma is nothing but whatever the cells which are there in a tissue will be considered as parenchymal cells that means whatever the cells which are there in our body will become will be called as parenchymal cells the, all the cells which are there in our body so irrespective of its classification we will call it as uh, parenchymal cells and supportive stroma is nothing but a the framework on which so basement membrane and other material which are there on which these cells will build up each other will build up on layer by layer so it can be simply 
so easily depicted by this picture. So, if you consider whatever the cells which are there in our body as uh, laddus here and to arrange these laddus in a pattern, we need a support. So, that is nothing but supportive stroma. This supportive stroma comprises of blood vessels, nerves and other supporting material which is needed for the proper arrangement as well as growth of parenchymal cells. So, whatever the cells which are there in our body, we said we can call it as parenchymal cells and they can broadly divide into two types. One is epithelial cells and mesenchymal cells. That means the whole body, the whatever the cells which are there in our whole body can be divided into two types. One is epithelial cells as well as another one is mesenchymal cells. Coming to the nomenclature of tumors. So, nomenclature of tumors will be based on the parenchymal component. That means, what are, so whatever the cells which are present in that tissue which was developed with the cancer. So, if those parenchymal cells are epithelial cells, we will call that cancer as carcinoma, oma will be added as a suffix and if it is mesenchymal cell, we will call it as sarcoma. But there are some exceptions for this, carcinoma of melanocytes will be considered as melanoma, carcinoma of hepatocytes as hepatoma and cancer of blood cells can be called as leukemia, where we call, so where we will not use the term oma. So, malignant tumor of epithelial cells is known as carcinoma and malignant tumor of mesenchymal cells is known as sarcoma. So, whenever if you hear some types of cancer, they will use some words. Suppose, if there is a, if it is a cancer which is related to a gland, we will use the prefix called adeno and if it is a cancer which is related to cartilage, we will call it as chondro. If it is related to red blood cells, we will call it as erindro. If it is related to blood vessels, we will call it as hemangio. If it is related to liver, hepato, fats, lipo, lymphocytes, lympho, pigment cells, melano, bone marrow, milo, muscles, myo and then on the last one, bone, it is nothing but osteo. Suppose osteosarcoma, so which means, so it is a sarcoma, which is a malignant tumor of, so mesenchymal cells and those mesenchymal cells are nothing but your skeletal, so whatever the bone, bone cells which are there, so that is osteosarcoma. So, hepatocarcinoma, hepatocarcinoma or hepatoma, we can also call it as hepatoma. So, epithelial cells which are the malignant tumor of epithelial cells is known as uh, carcinoma and if those epithelial cells which are present in liver, then we will, uh, if they got affected with cancer, we will call it as hepatoma. And these are all the different uh, names by which we have to call whenever if a tissue got affected with cancer. So, first we will go with uh, parenchyma, that means epithelial tumors. If it is squamous epithelium and, and if it is a benign tumor, we will call it as squamous cell papilloma and malignant one, we will call it as squamous cell carcinoma. And then transitional epithelium, so if it is benign, transitional cell papilloma and transitional cell carcinoma. Glandular epithelium, so gland, if it is a gland, we will call it as adenoma. So, if it is a malignant one, adenocarcinoma like that. So, we will have naming in case of epithelial tumors. And whenever it comes to uh, mesenchymal cells, if it is an adipose tissue, benign tumor, we will call it as lipoma, malignant liposarcoma. Adult fibrous tissue, fibroma, fibrosarcoma. Embryonic fibrous tissue, myxoma, myxosarcoma. Cartilage, so if it is cartilage, we have to add prefix as chondro. So, if it is benign tumor, chondroma, chondrosarcoma, if it is malignant. So, bone, osteoma, osteosarcoma. Like this, we will have uh, naming of tumors in case of mesenchymal cells. And coming to the characteristics of tumors, so one of the most important characteristics of tumor is nothing but excessive growth. So, you all know benign tumors will grow slowly and malignant tumors will grow rapidly and this growth depends on doubling time. And doubling time is, if the, this doubling time is less, the rate of growth will be fast. If the doubling time is more, the rate of growth will be less. Doubling time is nothing but the time which is taken by a cell to get divided into two. And tumor growth also depends on the availability of growth factors as well as the nutrients. And in case of malignant tumors, we will observe rate of proliferation more, more rate of proliferation when compared to the rate of cell death. So, that is why we will observe a very large uh, tumor. So, the growth will be more. And then next characteristic is cancer phenotype. So, generally these cancer cells will have an antisocial behavior. 
so this antisocial behavior means so their behavior will not so is not similar to that of the normal cells which are there in the body so what are what is that antisocial behavior so they will disobey the growth control signal and proliferate rapidly so they will escape death signals generally uh, some cells will die by necrosis or some cells will die by apoptosis mostly by intracellular as well as extracellular signals but these cancer cells will escape those de death signals and they will achieve mortality and there will be balance imbalance between proliferation and cell death so excessive growth they will lose the property of differentiation and they will perform very little function and due to loss of growth controls cancer cells are genetically unstable and they will develop newer mutations a uh, third characteristic is invasion so these uh, we all we already said benign tumors won't invade into the neighboring tissues but malignant tumors will invade into the neighboring tissues and causes damage and metastasis metastasis is nothing but uh, transformation that means or a movement of a tumor from one place to another place and forming a secondary tumor suppose if there is any tumor is there in my uh, toe so that tumor uh, will spread through blood vessels or lymphatic vessels and it form its secondary in my thigh or whatever the tumor which is there in my thigh it may spread to my lungs so so this transformation from one place to another place is considered as metastasis so this invasion of metastasis is or option in case of benign tumors but we will observe it in case of malignant tumors and another characteristic is abnormal cytomorphological changes we will observe abnormal cytomorphology in the form of loss of basal polarity pleomorphism increased nucleocytoplasmic ratio anisonucleosis nuclear hypochromatism uh nu nucleoli prominent abnormal mitotic figure giant cells increased mucin release as well as gna aneuploidy so these are all the different cytomorphological changes which we will observe in case of tumor cells uh, when compared to normal cell and next coming to the presence of abnormal and atypical mitotic figures is one of the most important characteristics which is observed in case of tumor cells so generally whenever a cell is uh, undergoing mitosis we will observe bipolar spindles so whenever a cell is getting undergone mitosis we will observe bipolar spindles that means from one cell we will observe the formation of two cells but as these cells are very aggressive as they want to grow very fastly these cells try to uh, so try, these cells will try to grow very fast and they form tripolar spindles that means from one cell they will try to divide it into three and even we can also observe uh, quadripolar uh, spindles so in case of cancer cells and tumor angiogenesis so as this tumor is growing very fast it requires more amount of oxygen and nutrients for this uh, they need blood vessels so with, they will release uh, this vascular endothelial growth factor then they will initiate the angiogenesis process as the tumor grows and more number of blood vessels will be formed on the periphery of the tumor and nourishes the tumor but, but one thing which we have to remember is as the tumor is growing more and more the whatever the tumor cells which are there in the core part of the tumor they will die because of necrosis as they will not receive uh, this nourishment differentiation and aplasia so one of, one of the most important concepts which you have to know here is in general tumors are structurally and functionally different from the normal tissues and the extent of structural and functional resemblance of a tumor cell when compared to its normal tissue will be uh, known as is known as differentiation if this resemblance is more then we will call it as a well differentiated tumor if the resemblance is less we will call it as poorly differentiated tumor and if there is no differentiation if there is no resemblance at all we will call it as anaplastic tumor generally comparison should be done in between a normal tissue and corresponding and its corresponding tumor and if you see these pictures in the first picture there are uh, two twins who are very uh, similar to each other so structurally they are uh, morphologically they are very similar to each other so that's why you can say they are well differentiated the extent of resemblance is more and in the second picture so they are look alike but there are some differences there in between the them and the two kids which are there in the second picture so that means the extent of resemblance is less so they are poorly differentiated and coming to the third picture you can find lack of resemblance so there is no resemblance at all so that's why we will call it a uh, anaplastic so in the same way when you compare a normal tissue with a tumor tissue 
So, if the resemblance is more, we will call it as well differentiated. If it is less, we will call it as poorly differentiated. If the resemblance is not at all there, if